Hey everybody, I'm Sandra Fellers and this is my mom, Sandy White. I thought it'd be super fun to do a Mother's Day video and um, kind of interview my mom and give you a chance to get to know her and get to know me a little bit more. And also it would be pretty cool to um, hear some stories that she has um, of having us as kids and because um, she had six kids. Uh, four boys and two girls, and um, I'm the youngest. And uh, so, anyway, I didn't follow her lead. I only had two kids myself. But um, in honor and celebration of Mother's Day and all of the moms out there, I wanted to do um, this video and share a little bit about us. We have a super close relationship, and um, we just want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day and um, share a little bit about us. So, um, as much as I loved having a large family, I did mention that I did not follow in those footsteps with her. Um, but mom, tell me something or tell me a little bit about the first time you were pregnant. Obviously it wasn't with me, so. The first time I was pregnant, I lost the baby. Oh. A lot of people can relate to that because a lot of women have, it's horrible. have those miscarriages. But then within three months, I was pregnant again. And that was James. He's my oldest. And oh, I was so proud of James. He was just absolutely gorgeous. He was a good boy. All my kids were good till they hit teenagers. Then they, they, <laughs> they, they had me go in there for a while. But uh, he was so sweet, and I just loved him so much. And then came along, and I had Charlene. Well, how old were you first when you had James? I, James was born on my 18th birthday. So that was a what pretty cool a present. birthday present. Huh? Oh, it was yeah. wonderful. That's an awesome birthday present. So I was 21 whenever I had my oldest, Eric. Um, he was delivered 10 days past his due date, but was totally worth the wait. Um, he is, oh gosh, 24 now, and uh, he's a pretty awesome human, so I'm pretty excited to have him. Um, but mom, I know that there were um, some influences in how you picked some of the names um, of your kids, so tell me about um, who you decided to use as a namesake and how you kind of did that um, with your kids. Well, James was my first one, and I had a hard time picking his name because Grandma Neve never liked what I picked. And then uh, one <laughs> one day I told her, because I said, I'll tell you what, Grandma, we're going to name him Marshall Dillon after the, the actor, uh -huh. the gun, sh gun smoke show. Oh, Sandra, you wouldn't do that. I said, no, ma'am, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so I named him. James Lewis, which was my maiden name, and that's how he got his name. And then did Char you spell it the same as your maiden name? Or I did. Okay. And uh, Charlene got her name, and I had uh, Mary Elizabeth chose because uh, Sandra's dad had a sister named Mary Elizabeth, and I had an aunt named that, and I thought it was beautiful. And uh, when I was walking out of the house to go to the hospital, my grandpa said, I don't like that name. I said, what name do you like? And he said, Charlene. Well, years later, I found out Charlene was off of a girly calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and who was it that liked it? Papa. Papa Nasur. He, okay. <laughs> he was my grandpa that uh, I lived with in, my, in the house the whole, my whole life until I got married. And unfortunately, I don't uh, remember him at all. Um, I don't know. He, he was, either passed he, away before was I was gone. born or shortly after, huh? I think you were. I don't think you were born yeah, yet, but so I don't he remember. Passed away before yeah. I was born, so I didn't actually get to know. And him. then uh, I wanted Jays for my boys, and so then they had. Then we had John Paul, and uh, then we had Jeffrey, and then I knew that Lexi was going to be my last child. <laughs> And I had to name him after my dad because I always liked the name Lexi. And so he's Lexi Lee Neeb, and my daddy was Lexi Lee Lewis. So he wasn't a junior, but he was Lexi. 
but my nephew, so my brother Lexi named <coughs> his son Lexi Lee Neeb, so his son is a junior. So he's carried on that family name as well, which I think is pretty awesome. And then I come along, <coughs> excuse me, six years later, and the Lord have mercy, I'm pregnant again. All these teenage kids, and I was devastated. I was embarrassed. But the teenagers made it. It just made it. I didn't want to be pregnant because I had, Lexi was my last one, and he was going to school, and oh boy, we were going to get a king size bed and a patio. Instead, we got Sandra. <laughs> so she already had five kids, and four boys. You were about how old? 35? Uh, 30. 30. No, I wasn't that old yet. Uh, it, there's about two years in between everybody but you and Lexi and Jeffrey and John Paul were just a year apart. And, and so then she thought she was done having kids. Oh, and yes. oops. My beautiful Sandra came along. <laughs> Charlene just loved her. All the kids loved her. When I came home, they helped me make the nursery. They painted the, the walls and way they helped me get everything ready. And uh, the day we come home from the hospital, <clears throat> my allergies are getting me. The day we come home from the hospital, there was a yard full of children, all teenagers, to welcome Sandra home. <laughs> I'm feeling loved. Oh, she was. <laughs> and uh, James's friend, uh, Steve Gamez, I'll never forget him as long as I live. He become almost one of my kids. And uh, every 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 evening at dinner time, the doorbell would ring and it would be Steve. He was ready to eat too because he <laughs> liked my cooking. His mother had to work, so she wasn't there. And so we adopted him, me and James and all the other kids. And... Uh, the, him and Danny Laura, all of them were in the front yard waiting on Sandra to come home. And when she started walking, I would tap her hand and not let her touch the TV knob. That made Steve mad. He didn't want me to tap her hands. He got up and left <laughs> one day. But, uh, and in the, the doctor told me for nine months I was having a boy, and I already had four teenage boys that were driving me crazy, but I loved. And out came Sandra, a girl, and she's been a godsend. They all have, every one of them. Well, um, when I had my youngest, my second and youngest, <coughs> I only had two, um, she was having a little bit of trouble breathing, and so they put her in the NICU, which um, if any of you are familiar with that, that's where they put all of the premature babies who are like, you know, itty bitty one pounders or whatever. Five pounds. And well, pounders. yeah. And so Courtney was born at eight pounds and one ounce. So when they rolled her into the NICU, she was the prettiest sumo wrestler baby you ever saw <laughs> next to all those little bitty. And I say that lovingly because she was a beautiful, beautiful baby. And I adore her. And she her. wasn't really that big. She was full term. It was just next to these itty bitty tiny things. She looked huge. Um, but she um, she is now uh, grown and doing very well. Um, no Beautiful. complications or anything. Um, so, Mom, did you have um, any kind of complications or sick babies or anything? I like had that? a doctor tell me one time I could have a baby every year and it wouldn't hurt me. Yeah? I wanted to kick him. You were made for that. <laughs> I was made for that. I wanted a big family. I always wanted a large family. And I got my large family. And uh, I... I got four boys and two girls, and they've uh, they've all turned out good. And there was a time when I thought I was wasting my breath by talking to them and telling them, you're not supposed to do this, you can't do this, you shouldn't be with this person because they're doing bad things or this, that, or the other. I thought it went in one ear and out the other if it ever went in. But I know now, I don't know. James is close to 60. He's, and Sandra's... He might not want you telling He age. may not. He, <laughs> you know, they, they say that uh, women are... Uh, what do you, how do you say it? They primp and they... Vain. Vain. Well, so are boys. <laughs> I want you to know all of my boys are very vain. They don't want gray hair. They don't want to wear glasses. And 
uh, even Steve, he's not he's not mine, but he is mine. That's Sandra's husband. He I gave him all a pair of glasses for Christmas last year, at the readers, and they all looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> but, a sign uh, of aging. Well, um, we haven't really talked about Jeffrey much, and um, you know anybody who knows our family knows that he has those gorgeous curls that he used to keep really long when he was a teenager. And um, so he had like lots of curls. Um, he keeps it short now, but I'm curious, when he was born, did he have hair and was it curly? All of my children were born bald. Well, just little peach fuzz, they were blondes. And so was Jeffrey. And that, I don't remember whether it was curly or not. But uh, Jeffrey is, uh, he has a personality of his own. He is big-hearted, good. Poor little Jeffrey come along after a year and two weeks after John Paul. And I was devastated. I was, I think I probably had partum, what do you call it, depression? Postpartum. Postpartum depression. But I, back then they didn't know what that was. But uh, he was the, the thinnest one out of all of them. He, he never was a chucky, chuggy baby. He's still pretty thin. And Grandma Neve told me that uh, if he was eating, I needed to take him to the doctor. Something was <laughs> wrong with him because he was so thin. Well, I took him to the doctor because I would have done anything she said. And uh, the doctor laughed at me and he said, he's one of the healthiest children I've ever had. And he had not to worry about him as long as he was eating the right foods. And he'll eat till this day anything you put in front of him. <laughs> And uh, he was, uh, he was always, when he did something, but I can remember the big wheels. When Jeffrey got his big wheels, he must have been four or five. He rode the big wheel all day long until the that night. And when he, he had muscle spasms, he was, <laughs> he had ridden it so long. And he was, uh, he, he didn't, he did what he wanted. I said, don't climb that willow tree, Jeffrey, any of y'all, because the, le the limbs are brittle and they'll snap. Well, one day, James come running in the house. Mama Jeffrey's up in the top of the tree. He must have been four or five at the same time. So I ran outside and I went up the ladder. James went up the tree. Jeffrey... Went one way, James went the other, and I went the other. We all fell, and it knocked the breath out of him and scared the breath out of me. <laughs> I just That's shook what boys him. are good at doing. <laughs> uh, I just shook him, and then I whipped them all and told them they should have been watching him careful. They were, <laughs> he, they were his responsibility when they were outside. James had gone down the street to see a girlfriend. It, which it was in hollering distance, but at the same time, he was looking for girls back then. That By that age, he must have been 13, 14 years old. But uh, anyhow, Jeffrey, Jeffrey survived. Mama's heart almost broke, and he made it. <laughs> well, um, uh, anybody who knows our family knows that we did have a tragic situation. Um, I don't want to make this a sad video at all, and I'm not trying to make Mama cry, but she told me she knew she was going to cry. Um, <laughs> not about this, but just about talking about her babies. Um, but so my brother, John Paul, um, was involved in a tragic accident when he was just a teenager, and we lost him 17. Um, at 17, way too young, super hard for our family. But um, on the flip side, I want to think of... I want you to think of a, a good-hearted story about him or his personality or, or something, something John that Paul you can remember on and smile. Was the sweetest baby, and he was beautiful. He had the little fat cheeks. He had dark brown hair. All my other boys were blondes, and he was just just a good child. He was well. He had to be a good baby because I had an, another one right behind him. So now he had the mumps when he was about two or three, and uh, he he he. But he was just a good good person, quiet. And I'm here to tell you, if there was a football game on from the time he was old enough where, to know what a football was, he was watching it. Hmm. The house could burn down around him, <laughs> and he would he would know what was going on. But he watched that football. He was a very smart child. 
all of my children were smart. And I'm not prejudiced at all. <laughs> well, that, re that reminds me, um, you said the house could burn down around him if he was watching football. That reminds me of some stories that I heard about Charlene and her love of reading. So you want to tell us about that? Okay. Charlene could read a book all day long and half the night. And I said, Charlene, let's go to the mall. And she said, I don't really want to go, Mom. I said, come on, baby. Mama don't want to go by herself. And she said, all right. So Charlene was a good child. She, she, if I said crawl, she'd crawl. If I said run, she'd run. And uh, so we got ready and we got, we got dressed and we drove to the mall and I got out and Charlene stayed in the car. I said, Charlene, aren't you coming in with mama? No, I'll sit here. You go ahead. So she sat in the car and read the book. <laughs> And I, uh, me on the other hand, I'm in the shopping mall with her, and we're walking our little feet hours, <laughs> hours, touching everything in every store. Charlene was never a really a shopper, but she had angel eyes, and she was little and tiny, and just a little angel. <laughs> Again, I'm not prejudiced. So now I need you to tell us about um, James. He's the oldest. And um, at a very young age, he decided what his profession was going to be, even though mom wanted him to be the president. He had other things in mind. My president, my first boy, my president, he came running in the house one day and he said, Mom, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. I said, oh, honey, what are you going to be? A garbage man. <laughs> I Not said, a president. <laughs> Why do you want to be a garbage man? He said, they've got leather gloves. I said, honey, mama, buy you a pair of leather gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with being a garbage man. It's, a, it's an honest job. I just wanted him to be the president. <laughs> he's not the president, as we all know. <laughs> no, but he's a pretty awesome guy, so that's all good. <laughs> he's, he's got uh, three, go three boys and... One that's not his, but he feels like it's his. Um, let's see. Another story that I wanted to um, bring up was um, whenever, uh, I believe we were living in Florida and Lexi was playing football. There's, oh, mercy, yes. There's a little mama bear story where you had a mama bear moment. Can you tell us? Well, <laughs> are you talking about when he got hurt on football? Mm -hmm. Well, he... It, all the girls loved him. He had long blonde hair and he was gorgeous and I'm still not prejudiced. And they knocked him out. The I football jumped. players did, not the girls. <laughs> they, they were, yeah, the, he was running with the ball and they knocked him out and I cleared the fence. I jumped the fence. I'm in the middle of the football field. He woke up and saw me standing there and he said, mom, Go back to the bleachers, please. I had to walk around. I couldn't get back over. I think he was mortified because all of the girls that swooned over him saw his mama run into his rescue. But probably clearing the fence. <laughs> I couldn't have done it if, if it hadn't been for something like that. Oh, goodness. Well, Mom, I really, really, really thank you for agreeing to do this for me. Um, I know all of my siblings are going to love to watch this video, and I hope that some of my followers will enjoy it as well and have enjoyed um, learning a little bit about us. And um, I want to tell you Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I love you. Love you, love you. And Happy Mother's Day to all of you out there. Um, spend it with your families. Uh, take videos, take pictures so that you can look back on all those memories. Um, I'm known in the family for taking all the pictures. I love taking pictures and looking and back mom on those on memories. <laughs> and um, now I'm getting mom on camera because all of these kind of things are in her head. And some of them we've heard and some of them we haven't. And um, we never want to forget them. I can't, we I, can't forever. I can't believe she thinks that I've said it all because it's in a million years I couldn't say all the wonderful things that no, I, my no. children are mean to me. <laughs> no, we, um, we're going to have this video to treasure forever, though. We can always look back on it and um, see some of the fun stories that Mama liked to tell of, about us. I always wanted to do a, a video with Nanny. I mean, a, a journal. 
I, that's, that reminds me of Lexi again. <clears throat> she came out to the house one day and uh, Lexi was staying, was living with us then and he had a brand new truck. And she came in and she said, whose new truck is that out there? And I said, Lexi's, and he's standing there just waking up. He, he looked up at her and she said, I hit it. And he looked at me. I said, don't look at me. I didn't hit it. <laughs> oh, hit it. Hit it. Yeah. H-I-T. She was picking at him. <laughs> and then one day she come out and she said, uh, Lexi, I'm saving all my pantyhose for you so you can be warm. <laughs> he didn't want her pantyhose or anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> Our nanny was a hoot and uh, we miss her dearly. But um, she kept us rolling all the time. She <laughs> had a time. sense of humor. <laughs> she really did. So again, everybody, um, cherish the memories and the moments while you have them. Make memories um, and um, preserve them with photos and videos so that you can always look back on them. Have a beautiful, beautiful Mother's Day. Love you guys. Bye-bye.